Leeds United made the most of their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart, the team they say has more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Karl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute, and tomorrow's his birthday. Hello, welcome to episode 121 of the Talking Chuck podcast. And for anybody who's watching live, it may be blatantly obvious that we're distinctly lacking an Ian Baird, who was supposed to be on the show tonight. But also for those watching live, it'll be distinctly obvious that we're quite late to being live, and the two are linked. So basically, we've had some real technical issues at Baird's end, and we're unable to get him on, which is a great disappointment, and... Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm quite disappointed, but um, you know, the internet gods have um got together to fuck us over. So, uh, Raggy, the man with the best man on the beard, and Paddy, who's rivaling Raggy with the best man on the beard, and myself, we're gonna fill like real live TV people. We're like gonna fill, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna f- I, have, I have made notes for this show, but they all might as well just go out the window now. Yeah, and I'm very, very similar. Um, and, 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 you know, and like there's been a few comments before we came on that were like, you know, you won't get this with a square ball and you won't get this with, with LS11 and you won't get this with Leeds that. But but then again, they're not us. And you definitely get this with us because we're just we're just five numpties who created a podcast. So anyway, lads, so uh, all jokes there's, there's, there's only three of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's only three of us because rest couldn't be asked. But anyway, all, all to- totally joking apart. Um, sadly, we've had some real technical issues. I've been on the phone to Bairdy to try and sort it. Uh, but I promise you, we'll get Bairdy on. We'll do a, a separate, um, a separate show and just purely talk to Bairdy about his career when we manage to get his technical issues sorted out. So uh, first and foremost, thanks to him uh, for taking his time to try and sort it. Uh, but we will get him on, I promise, because I think he'll be a great guest. And thanks to Cy Walton, former guest, for sorting us out as well with Bairdy. But lads. I think the best place to start possibly is Spain, Germany last night uh, because we had a dog in the fight, a dog in the shape of Robin Koch uh, and we saw um, Spain right royally shaft Germany. Um, any worries, concerns that we're starting to worry a little bit of Robin Koch because he looked a bit at sixes and sevens last night and um, I don't know if it was a team performance thing or if... He was just having a bad night. I mean, what ragged, uh, Pad, sorry, as a, a centre half, uh, does this start playing in your head a little bit? I think it does when you start conceding quite a lot of goals. Yeah, you kind of look at your own game, don't you? Because he's conceded four twice for the last two games for Leeds. He's then gone away with Germany and conceded six last night. But I suppose it's one of them. He's still only young, isn't he? And then if you look at that German side, it's probably not the force that it has been over the past. 10, 15 years either in Spain. Spain were really good, weren't they? So it's a bit of a mixture of both. He might see it as, right, I've got away, got, gone to Germany, not played great. Coming back to Leeds is a bit of a relief for him, really. And hopefully he wants to put that right against Arsenal in the next game and get back to training and, and getting more points on the board for us, really, and doing his bread and butter, really, for that sort of side of it. But I suppose it's not really a worry because you think more... At that elite level, he is at the elite level playing international football for Germany, and he can't have the mentality where he dwells on stuff. So for me, he's just got to have the mentality of, of putting it right. So no doubt he's got that. Otherwise, he won't have come to the Premier League. Um, he won't be a German international. So it's not overly a concern for me, no. Did he play? Did he play as a centre half last night? I didn't watch the game last night. Did he play yeah, as a centre half? Because he played. Didn't he play defensive mid against Ukraine? Yeah. For, the, for the ninth, played more in midfield, didn't he? More, more in midfield, because um, I thought that was quite interesting. I know he's done that 
I know he did that a few times at, at Freiburg. I don't know whether he's done that for the national team before. And I thought that was quite an interesting thing about whether whether that would be a kind of a, a, nat, a natural thing for us to look at domestically, obviously for Leeds, um, if and when, you know, Cooper and Lorente is fit and, and whether, you know, whether that would be a natural thing for him to to, to look at. But obviously if he's, if he's dropped back into centre half and then shit six, I mean, I, I'm, again, I didn't watch it, so I don't know whether any are, are directly attributable to him. But um, yeah, like you say, you just got to kind of block that out, aren't you, and move on. Lads, I can't help but feel this international break might have actually helped us out a little bit because we've not seen Calvin go away with England, who obviously play tonight. We've not seen uh, Rodrigo go away with Spain, so it's given him time to get over. COVID if he was at all ill with COVID, but it gives him time to see out his isolation. Um, you know, obviously, Alioski is the slight downside. It appears he's picked up a knock, but we're not sure to the extent of his knock. But I can't help but feel like we've probably done all right out this international break because we haven't actually had that many people away on international duty, minus Robin Cock, obviously. Yorente didn't well, uh, go away either. Yeah but, yeah, but Cooper's probably on another bender. Yeah, true. True, yeah. We never thought <laughs> yeah, that, they've, yeah. they've they've qualified, so he's probably been pissed all week since yeah, then. The, yeah, never I never thought of that. But <laughs> Paddy, Paddy, <laughs> post post football, what is the most drunk you've ever been? Like what's the most celebrating you've done as a as a as a football player and how pissed did you get? Um the night the the night that my car score went out when we got to the first round at FA Cup. That was a heavy night in Leeds that year. Um and the night we got promoted with Hydric car school again, we went out into Leeds, beat Mosley away and went out and that was a, a pretty heavy night out really football wise but I suppose it's like oh, really, you might get an odd person questioning Cooper drinking and that but let's be honest if he's, he's just qualified for the European Championship mm -hmm. for Scotland you can't fault him whatsoever he's, and let's be fair he works hard doesn't he he's not oh, I, I'm not criticising him I'm just saying oh, no, no, I'm, not about you. I'm not about Generally, you'll always get one or two people going, oh, look at him out drinking. But he's a, he's a human at the end of the day. If he wants to go out and celebrate, and that's how he chooses to do it, as long as he puts it in when he's back, that's fine. But I'm not being funny. 18 months ago, we have been called League One Liam, so fair fucks yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. Let's go and get a bender, then fair dues. Um, obviously, yeah, we're yeah, live. Doing, they were doing that conga line, weren't they, round tables, singing about David Marshall. That's what they were doing. Oh, was it? I don't know. I haven't I ain't managed to caught any of it. Um, but I've just been told by Sandy Duncan, when I say I've just been told, we've just been told by Sandy Duncan on Facebook that Coop's on the bench tonight. So that's good. Um, I, I've got to that point, and I, I talked about it last week, where I just want us players not to come back broken, please. That'd be nice. Um, like, let them go away, and we'll all go, yay, they've got no cap, but don't break them. Um, it, could be, it could be worse, mate. It could be Liverpool. Every and now that wow. William, Will, the Williams, the 21 player, has been sent home with a hip injury as well today. The centre half has been covering, yeah. Shit. You, yeah. Ray, call me cynical, and we're going to run off on many tangents during this podcast because we've got to fill some time. Um, so if you've got any points you want to get in, then please do. But um, do you not think this strengthens the five substitutes argument in the Premier League? And we've seen the AFL and the Championship today vote for the five uh, subs. Do you not think all this argument about players getting injured kind of strengthens that argument because I personally think that it's only going to strengthen the top five teams but I don't know what what, what do you think like I said last week I think the five sub rule I before it if the extra two had to come from your academy and were homegrown I'd be for that I'd be all for it because you think well it's giving the academy lads a chance and it's giving them something to work towards for example we might add Gel, Gel down Greenwood to the bench and it's giving you another option but it's also developing the young, the young players in the country and I think that's a big thing but if you're looking at it from a Liverpool aspect or a Man City or Chelsea the top teams who can go out and spend 100 million quid without even worrying about it I think it defeats the purpose because they'll just go out spend 100 million pounds add two subs to the bench they'll be happy coming in knowing they're a sub because they'll be on 200 grand a week and it's unfair on the rest of the league because if, if even from a, a balance in the book, books perspective, which you have to do, nobody else can compete with that because you get teams in the in the league like Burnley and, and everyone like that. And with all due respect, they can't do that because they can't balance the books. So they can't go out and pay them wages. So it's giving them mm. an unfair advantage. So you're kind of getting this. What they're all pushing for is this Super League and this European Super League. But by doing the five subs, you're going to enable them to kind of do that within your own league. 
Yeah, agreed. Agreed. A few people in the comments. If you have got any comments put in, if you want us to discuss anything, please, 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 please jump on and give us them. But um, a few people saying Koch was terrible last night, but he wasn't alone. And Gordon White makes a point, which I'm going to flash it up on screen if it'll work, that says the German defence didn't look organised. With Leeds, Cox knows what's happening. Uh, Marcelo Bielsa lets the players know what their job is for each match. Do you know what will be hard for Koch? He's going from a lead side where everything is man marking and it's a bit of a different system. So then he'll probably go away with Germany and it's completely different to what Bielsa does. So you have to be an unbelievable player, both physically and mentally, to be able to adapt like that straight away. And I think that's why a lot of international managers complain that they don't get the players long enough because they can't get their points across and get their systems working right. So because we play in such a strange way compared to, compared to every other team, you'll probably find that on occasions that our players struggle a bit when they first go away with international duty to adapt. Yeah, yeah. definitely. On a, on a side note altogether, and this is just running off on a total tangent, Paddy, do they have um, they have curfews when you're in non-league in terms of don't go out on piss night before and you, you're not allowed out and all this type of stuff? I think it depends on club and it depends on the on the gaffer and stuff. Most All the clubs I've been at, um, like Hyde was one really professionally, Scarborough was, and I think it, it comes from the fact that, I know it sounds crazy, but like your fines list, so whoever does the fines and stuff like that, if you go out 48 hours before kickoff. Most of the clubs I've been at, yeah, you're going to get fined and if the gaffer finds out, you're probably going to be out of the team on the Saturday. And I've always, When I was captain at clubs, I was always quite strict with it because we did the fines as well. And I just I felt like, regardless whether you get paid 20 quid or 200 grand, there's people that are going to be get, paying money to come watch you play. that will be travelling the country, they'll be paying a fiver in, whatever it is. But by the time you work it out over the day, there's 30, 40 quid they'll probably spend. They'll bring the kids, whatever. And for me, even in non-league, I think that you've got a right to do things properly. Um, occasionally, I got called busy from lads that I played with. Oh, bloody hell, you're busy, you. But <laughs> I just think if you're getting, if you're getting paid, it's, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's 20 quid or 200 grand. It's a job and you should do it right. I was going to say, you've got to have a level of professional pride, haven't you? It doesn't matter what you do. Yeah, yeah. but lads. Yeah. But lads. Rules are there to be broken. They're just guidelines, aren't they? They're not. It's not rule. They're just there to be broken. Do you not think? Do you, do you not think there's an element of that? Do you know what though? I've played with some players who, throughout the whole career and whole life, will go out for beers on a Friday night after work, and I've got no problem with that in non-league. Lads are working Monday to Friday. Got families. If they want a couple of beers, as long as they play well <laughs> on a Saturday, and I won't stitch anyone up by naming them on here, right? No, you but, should definitely name them. No, I'm not. <laughs> but we've got a fill. We've got a fill today. Come on, come I on. I can't make because they're still playing, so they'll get fined at the clubs now. So the thing is, though, if they're out on a Friday, if they play well on Saturday, no problem. There's some lads I know for a fact. If they don't have a couple of beers on a Friday as part of a routine, I've seen them play worse on a Saturday. Weird. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I've got, we'll, we'll we'll get back onto the cop discussion in a minute because Luke Fisher just brought a good point up, but. Um, when I was in a previous job, we used to get told we weren't allowed to go out for beers, um, but for totally different reasons than sporting ability. Um, so we obviously used to sneak out. And my best sneaking out story is this. Um, so we got told we were gated, we weren't allowed to go out. So what we did in the day is we packed a bag, just a single uh, bin liner uh, with some spare clothes, um, snuck, uh, shall we say, snuck to a fence, scaled a fence, Stripped out of the clothes that we were wearing, got into the um, other clothes. Anyway, got on it, got absolutely bang on it in a small German town. Anyway, uh, so we, 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 we I've let this stand. So I was in the army and we was absolutely bang at it. <laughs> anyway, we get to, so it's like four o'clock in the morning and we're in a German nightclub. And this is honestly how it happened. So I said to the lads, like, anybody want a beer? Yeah, get me a beer. So I goes to the bar and I'm facing the man who's working behind the bar and I say, oh, um, uh, it's gross a beer bitter. It's a bit of a German. Uh, two, two big beers, please. And uh, as I looked down the bar, as you do, bit of a look around the bar, look down, my sergeant major and the officer commanding my company is literally two people away. And he just looked down the line, looked at me, walked over and went, make sure you enjoy them. And uh, we'll have two more beers. Give him the two beers. He let us have his night out. 
And my God, I got fragged within an inch of my life the next day. I was being sick through my hand and my nose. Uh, so, yeah, when I said about rules are there to be broken, do as you told, kids, stay in school, don't drink, uh, and don't <laughs> join the army. In fairness, mate, most, at most clubs you've got like a players WhatsApp group chat and then you've got a group chat with the management in. And I've known a few, on a few occasions when the lads had a few beers on like a Friday night. Put wrong chat. The wrong, the wrong chat, mate, yeah. When you get that WhatsApp that says, Death, this message has been deleted. <laughs> yeah, but it used to, mate, a few years ago, you couldn't delete it. So you'd oh, be yeah, lads sorry. like turning phones on and off, trying to trying to get rid of it, deleting WhatsApp. But once it had gone, it had gone. Yeah, true. Um, group texts get people in a fair bit of bother, don't they? We, we discussed this in our group text the other day for <laughs> briefly, and uh, you know it stays in the group text. But yeah, I've um, I've been caught out with texting the wrong group a, a couple of times. To be fair, but I've I've even managed to get in and delete it first. But anyway, back to football. Back to football. Luke Fisher says what we've got to remember as well is that Cox were playing against Spain. It's not like you were playing in San Marino, so I'll just leave that there. Got a fair point, I suppose. Um, right, a little bit of a bugbear of mine, but Benjani Whitaker says, Leads aside, how bad is Gareth Southgate's tactic for England? Is it time to get a certain Eddie Howe in? Right. Let's discuss England. I know we don't like discussing it, but let's discuss England. Um, I have a bit of sympathy for Gareth Southgate, and you mentioned it, Pat, a couple of podcasts ago. It's like, you know, trying new things. However, when he starts playing right right wingers, uh, like left fullback and stuff like that, I begin to lose hope for what he's trying to achieve. What do you guys think on the current England debacle? I'm, I'm all for using, especially like Nations League and stuff like that, because uh, they are basically glorified friendlies, aren't they? They're just trying to add an element of competition to the friendly schedule. I'm all for trying things out. Uh, and experimenting and, 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 and moving things. But I'm really struggling to understand what he's trying to achieve. I don't know the end game. I know you've mentioned, Pad, that obviously, you know, come come tournament, we're gonna have to, you know, we're gonna come up against some some better teams where we are gonna have to potentially play defensive football. But and I and I don't agree with this, but we're second we're, well, we're joint favourite, or we were, we're joint favourites for the tournament. Uh, for, for next year's Euros, do you, and do you not think though? When and I don't think, and I don't think we'll be able to do that. Play going out and playing defensively, like you look at it now, and I think it's an absolute joke. I mean, I'd, I'd lay bets against England winning, <laughs> winning the uh, the tournament. I'd, I'd happily take them because I'd, I just don't see us going anywhere. Not not playing this sort of football. Not the thing is, as well, playing and, and not giving not giving those attacking players any license yeah you've got to play with your strengths and defensively yeah. let's be honest defensively England at the moment for me is arguably the weakest defensive side for quite some time I mean you look at that that defense I mean years gone by I mean we ate the shit house but John Terry were, were good at center center back in uh Rio Ferdinand good at center back in um now you know I I don't really massively rate Joe Gomez I know he's I know he's broken but like you know, you look at the options at centre back, and I'm not sure if I'm honest. I mean, I don't really rate Harry Maguire. Um, I'm not a big no. fan of Michael Keane. Uh, like, no, but but then we've got Jordan Sancho, uh, Sterling, Calvert Lewin. You know, you've got players who are who are doing big things for their clubs, respectively. And we don't play to our strengths. We we insist on trying to be defensive. I mean, what, what do you think, Pad? You, you're better place than us, Mongos, to talk about. I think. That. I think we no matter what team we've got, England are always one of the favourites for tournaments. If you look at the last five, six that we've gone to, we're always top two, three. And we, all, we all say it, we all say straight away, how are we one of the favourites for this tournament? And then, like you've just said there, guys, we've, we've had Rio, we've had John Terry, but they weren't good enough at international stage. We've had the golden generation that were nowhere near good enough. And I think when you look back, I think people that are wanting rid of Southgate, I completely understand watching these games and it being boring. I get it because mm. I've turned it off. I've not watched. I've not watched the last two properly. It's a bit boring, but I, and I get that. But you've got to remember what these games are—the friendlies and these nation league games. I'm a big believer in judge, your man, judge the manager at the major tournaments. It's all right when teams go out and they qualify, winning every game, but playing absolutely nobody. The last World Cup we got to the semi-final, we were all partying in Millennium Square and in Leeds City Centre, singing England songs, and we were all loving it. Who's to say that 
that happens again at the Euros, if we get to the semi-final again, is it not a success? Well, oh, say, saying that, there was there was very little expectation last year. We, we way over exceeded probably fans' expectation even getting to the semi-final. And realistically looking at it, it was probably a massive, a kind of a massive regret really that we didn't get to the final because that's a great chance of yeah. getting Croatia in, in, in the semi-final. Not a particularly brilliant Croatia either. Um, but what you've just mentioned there, when we're talking about Cock and we're talking about the kind of step from playing one style of football domestically and then playing a different style in, in Germany and how difficult that is for, obviously, international coaches to kind of stamp their authority. He's only got a limited amount of, of games before the next tournament, right? Obviously, we, you know, in terms of time, it's, it's next summer, so there's quite a lot of time. But in terms of actual England games, there's not going to be that many of England games. Realistically... He's got to have some sort of philosophy. I don't. I don't see the way that England are going to play. You know, we went into the last World Cup and we could see. You know, we you could see how he was going to play, and you know, a lot, a lot of kind of relying on set pieces, which we're still heavily reliant on. But we were kind of sound at the back, that, that three centre halves, two two kind of wingers, and and you moved on from there. And right now, he just does. You know, the amount of defenders in the in this squad. The amount of times he's played Calvin alongside another defensive midfielder and having two defensive midfielders sitting. In front Rice, of the, and, Rice and Phillips. Exactly. Rice and Phillips in front of a back four. And you're like, I just don't, I just don't. If it, Even if it was, right, we're going to play this way and it's going to be ultra defensive and we're just going to try and win. You know, that's fine. But then he'll mix it up the next game and then it's something different. And then it, and then it's, and then he'll revert back. To, and I just don't see any kind of, Real progression. You can't really see see how he wants to get it going. I just I just told reserve on judge if he goes to the Euros and get knocked out of the group stage and we're awful. Yeah, he has to go. Don't he? We like a batch of players. But let's be honest. Some of these players now are going away for these games, and they'll, they'll naturally they are thinking, I don't want to get injured here. You've got that as well. They're in not, absolutely nothing games when you've got people like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's on fire for Everton, started the season really well, got his chance, he's now their top goal scorer. Does he want to risk getting injured in a friendly for England? Probably not. So you've got that concern as well. You you have, but then you actually look at some, the way that some of those players, some of the newer players, like Calvert-Lewin, in, in the first international break, you had Phillips, you had Cody. Yeah. You know, when Cody scored that goal, I mean... It looked like what you want an England player to, to celebrate scoring a goal. I know he don't get many for Wolves because he's not allowed up at corners and stuff like that. I know he don't get many goals. But he, it, that was exactly what you wanted. And, it, and you had players there that seemed, you know, obviously new to the setup and seemed like they really, really wanted to play for England. And for me, that wasn't players kind of cautious about getting injured. They they were in. But then this batch, I don't think Cody's got. A, is Cody even in the squad? Has he had a game? Obviously, Philip is injured. I just don't know. I just like I say, I'm not. I'm not calling for his head like some people are because, and the and the real kind of argument behind that, my opinion there is, I I would shudder to think who we would replace him with. Do you know who Frank oh, Lampard? Well, that's what I mean. That's that's the oh, national. No, that's the national that. thing, isn't it? In, Mate, I'm telling you, Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard's England. Bloody hell. Can't be you know, that I'd, all time, but I'd, I'd hate that. Do you know when you run about obviously the defenses? the weakest it's been for a long time. And I'd agree, and that's probably why he does play three at the back to try and overcompensate for Maguire and help him out a bit. But then you're looking at it and you're going, I know he's probably not playing to the best of his ability, but if Ben White doesn't make that Euro squad, I think that could say more about Brighton because I think if he was with us, he makes that England squad for me, Ben White. Mate, turn your notifications off on Twitter. Them Seagull people are going to be coming for you. I do Honestly. But I think that if he were playing for Leeds and how well he did with us in the Championship and moved that into the Premier League, he'd be in this England squad for me. Yeah, I um, I have to agree with that. Yeah, shall we? Um, shall we? Shall we go back to talking about Leeds? It's a Leeds, Leeds podcast, mate. Podcast. Yeah, we 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 descended into a bit of England there, but we'll we'll go we'll go back to talking about Leeds. Um, big game coming up, really. It, but, but is it a big game? I, I just. I want this international break out. I'm, I'm fed up of it now. If I'm honest, I want, I want, I want, I want Leeds back. Uh, but 
a few people appear in and around, and like we've even witnessed it in our in our WhatsApp group. A few people in and around getting a little bit a little bit concerned after shipping eight goals in two games. And we come into a game against Arsenal, which we touched upon last week, um, where we said that you know uh, they've had a bit of a topsy turvy start to the season, but we need to be careful because they've got quality players. Are we being a bit overreactive on the eight goals in two games or is the justified reasons to be worried that we might end up in a relegation battle? Because I personally don't think so. I don't. If you look at it now, I'm just looking at the table now, we're 15th, that's 11th. If we, beat, if we beat them, we're above them in the league. Same games. We go above them in the league table and then he turns from... <laughs> Football is such a funny sport in terms of a week can make such a big difference, as we all know. If we go and beat Arsenal and we go to 10th, 11th in the table, 12th, everyone's going again. Yeah, do you think we can make Europe? It, that's exactly how it is. We'll be, what, four, three points off Europe then at that point? So we'll be closer to Europe than we would relegation. So I think at the minute it's too early to tell. I, I don't think we'll be in a relegation battle. I still think we'll finish no, between 12th and 14th and I think we'll be well clear. I think, I, think the, gone, Brad, sorry. I think we touched on it last week, didn't we, about the, obviously it's always concerning to, to get beat three, with a three-goal margin, two games running. Um, but you, you, take those two, you take those two results and you slot them in in a different, in a different uh, kind of formation of, of the results that come in. And we sat here quietly confident um, about, about the start that we've made. It's the fact that they've, they're the last games. It's the fact that they're back to back. Um, but then you actually analyse those games, and we were in those games, especially the Leicester game. I mean, obviously, first twenty minutes we kind of blown out of the water. Probably, maybe a little bit unlucky to be to, to, to only to only be two 0 down. A bit lucky, sorry. Um, but second half we've come out and we've bossed it, and we, you know, technically, really the amount of possession we've had should have maybe maybe got a, another goal and, and got the equaliser at some stage. Um, Crystal Palace, we've been cruelly cut down, for, you know, in, in a number of ways and just we haven't had the rub of the green. Um, other, game, other, day, other days, those two games could be replayed and we could get points out of them. So it's not like we've been soundly beaten. You've you got know. to remember, if we... If we'd have started the season, before we played Liverpool, if we'd have all sat round in pub and having a chat, and someone would have said, after eight games, you'll be seven points clear of relegation. We'd have snapped your hands off. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> Mate, you're, you're right. I, I did um, I did a few different podcasts uh, in the run-up to, uh, to the season beginning from various different outlets, and I said the same from all. This season's all about avoiding relegation. For me, you know, avoiding relegation is what this season's all about. And I think we probably all fell into the trap of, we had a decent start, we all got a bit carried away that we were going to do amazing things. And do you know what? The Premier League's a good a good standard and teams will find us out. Um, and it's about being able to win the winnable games and, you know, be in the games that we potentially are expected to lose for me. I was going to say, all, 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 we've, all we've really seen the, so far is if you make mistakes at this level, chances are you get punished. And that's not new. We knew that. We knew coming into the into this league that that was going to be the case, and we also knew um, that that we would be on. The, you know, it's not going to be like last season where you know realistically you should win every game. <laughs> you know that that was yeah. kind of like the level of expectation last year, wasn't it? Those first few home games at the beginning of last season, God, that feels so far far away. But when we drop points against the likes of Swansea and Forest. Darby and Forest. You know, they, they were really, they were gut-wrenching things because we just expected to be winning every single game. And obviously, by the end of the season, by the end of the season we kind of were. Um, mm. But we knew it was going to be completely different. Um, but, and it, you look at it, and, people, and I, I said it last week, we are conceding too many goals, that's a fact. And I think anyone at the club would say that you can't keep, keep conceding this amount of goals. However, when you compare it to the likes of Everton, They've conceded 14. Liverpool conceded 16. We've conceded 17. So we're only a couple of goals off those teams and conceded the same amount. Yep. And then you're looking at the both of those teams and they've both scored 16 goals. So we're only scoring two goals less than them at this stage in Liverpool and Everton. And people are looking at Everton. And yeah, they are obviously higher in the table. And it's all about points. But 
like we spoke about with Palace and Leicester, it's just the fine margins during the game where we, we get them into points. Yeah. The other, the other thing is as well, key players missing. Key players. Yeah. You know, Pascal Strait will go on to have a good footballing career, whether it's at Leeds United or elsewhere. But he's not a Calvin Phillips. Um, you know, Pablo's not had his his greatest game against Leicester, which obviously resulted in being hooked. <clears throat> and whatever's gone off's gone off. And then he didn't feature against Palace. You know, you've got Rodrigo there who's having to isolate. And he's been he's been fantastic when he's played. You know, like we've got we've got to kind of take it for what it is as well that we're missing we've been missing key players. And you know, as much as we've been amazing this year, we're not a city where we can, you know, lose Calvin and bring in another equally world class holding midfielder who can do the same job. You know, it, it just is what it is. Um Arsenal, I personally think we'll have a good go because the one thing that we've realised about this team, or we know about this team, is that they're resilient and they'll want to prove a point. You know, and I think Luke Ayling came out earlier on this week and said something similar, and I think Jack Harrison said something similar as well. Like, you know, um, what we know about this team is they're resilient and they'll have a go. I'm not personally that worried. In terms of knowing mentioned Pablo, then do you think he was dropped for the boot in the water bottle? No, do you know what I think he was dropped for? The armband. Yeah, because you saw that. You saw the inst- was it the Instagram post that he put yeah. about the and he used the Ellen Road Remembrance thing and said, you know, I apologise for the gesture and you know I didn't intend it that way. Um, I can imagine, yeah, that being taken out of context. And I don't think there was a big uproar within the fan base. I don't think no. people really picked up on it, but. I'm guessing Marcelo did. Do you know what, though? Pablo's, in terms of we didn't pick up on it, and we all turned around and said, oh, he's, he's kicked a water ball, he's frustrated, we'd rather see our players do that. But he's earned the right to be able to re- react like that for what he's done for the football club. I think if somebody, a new player comes in who's not proved himself, as a fan, we react a little bit differently, don't we, to that? I mm. just think because of everything he's done for the club and him being a legend, he, did, he he's frustrated and... As a fan, you can kind of relate to it a little bit because he's invested into the club, so you can kind of see that. Um, well, I, I do think that Bielsa would see the armband throwing as a yeah. as a downright disrespect, and I think that's what he probably got left out for. I don't think Bielsa. Let, let's let, you know. Let's not be let's not be naive enough to not believe. I mean, when Bielsa were at Atlas in Mexico, there was pretty much a, an uprising against him from the team. They're literally like down tools um, and said they weren't going to play anymore or, or one of the teams he was at, not Atlas maybe, but he went in there, tried to change the culture, the, the players tried the player power thing, you know, and he, and he rode it out. So he'll have seen frustrated players before, and it, but he'll also see, you know, why Pablo was frustrated. But I guarantee he will have took offence to the armband being thrown on the floor. It, mate, when I, first, when I first started playing on league, when I was like 17, 18, I was playing for Yorkshire Amateurs. And the club mate were absolutely skint, had no money, second bottom in Northern Counties Division One. And the manager mate, Graham Odder, proper proper nice guy, one of the most nicest guys I've come across in football, mate. Had his own money, bought these brand new water bottles. We were getting beat at Bottlesford away, I think it was, or Winston. Lovely place, mate. lovely place. And he brought me off, mate, and we were getting beat too, one hour playing rubbish. And uh he brings me off. And the first thing I saw, mate, were his brand new water bottles, mate, as I've come off. And I vault. I, meant, I didn't mean to kick them fully. I meant to boot one. Wiped the lot out. But they're completely split, mate. So all the water went flying out. The entire dugout, including Gaffer, mate, was soaked head to foot. And do you think I'm in trouble here? So <laughs> he didn't talk to me, mate. didn't say a word. And that's when I thought, he's, he's not really an angry guy. And I thought, oh, no, I've really let him down here. So I phoned him that night to apologise, mate. And he was absolutely sound, wasn't wouldn't even let me buy him. And he just said, to be fair, like he just said, I'd rather have that in a player than someone who just don't care. And, mm. But then obviously I learned from it because I thought, well, if I do that again, it's going to either cost me a fortune or I'm going to get bombed. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Mate, I got sent at stands in Louth. You know, Louth. <clears throat> Not far from Bottisford. I got sent at stands, but the stand was condemned. And the ref were like, go to the stands. I'm like, I can't go to the stands, it's condemned. And you're like, no, you need to go to the stands. I'm like, you keep saying I need to go to the stands. But there's traffic tape everywhere. I'm not allowed in the stand, it's condemned. No, go to the stands. So like Arsene Wenger in that famous picture where he's trying to like squeeze in between away fans. Mate, I was like moving traffic tape out of the way and sitting like asbestos-ridden stadium. 
on my own going, what the fucking hell's going on here? I've been sent to stand for having an argument with linesmen. What's that all about? Anyway, <laughs> different story, different day. Um, on to Arsenal then. Obviously, missing Mohamed El and Nenny. He's tested positive for COVID. Uh, I've just seen before we came on that so I said Kalanasiac who's a scary dude, but he, he's also a test of positive. Don't think he's played a great deal for Arsenal, to be honest. Um, I've, just been, I've just been looking through their lineups. He, he doesn't even make this, doesn't even make the bench in the Premier League in the last few games, but he has been starting in the uh, Europa League games. Right. He's, quite, so, he's quite hard, though. Yeah. Isn't he the one who fought off those attackers? He is, yeah. mate. Yeah, we, um, Ozil, yeah. Um, what do we think from Arsenal? Because they're one of them teams where you just think... They've always got the ability to just turn it on and be amazing. One one game, you know, but on, on the first things, they've not been very good. I mean, looking at their results here, uh, dicked by Villa, beat Mulder 4-1, beat Man United 1-0, which is no big shout nowadays, beat Dundalk 3-0, lost to Leicester 1-0 and beat Rapid Vienna. They're about the last five, six games, whatever it were. I think it's because they're not... Oh, oh sorry, Ryan, go on, man. No, no, you, you go I would say, because they're not the best defensively, they rely on heavily on the front three, don't they? You have William, Aubameyang, Lacazette and Nketiah when he plays. And if one of them or two of them aren't on it and don't turn it on, they get beat. And I think that's kind of where they're at with it. They've invested heavily on them, aren't they, on them three, and they've yeah. not really brought defenders in. I think Arsenal, for the last five or six years, everyone's been saying they need a centre mid and a centre half, and they still haven't gone and got one. Mm. And then you've got... Mikel Arteta was obviously an unbelievable coach and that side of it. But he's gone to Arsenal and he's changed the way that they play. They're a lot more... When you do watch them, they are very similar to Man City in the way they try and play. But they don't have the same personnel as what Man City have. So they're, they're going for a bit of a transitional period at the minute, I think, are Arsenal. Obviously, if their front three are on it in William, Lacazette and Aubameyang, they could be as good as any front three in the division. But I think if... Uh, if we obviously need to tighten up at the back because we've not been the best in that side of it. But I think if, if we can do that, I think they're there for the attacking defensively. Yeah, other news is that Thomas Part is fit to play on Sunday. Um, obviously, a big money signing in the summer. I forget what time of year we're at now with COVID and all that. But yeah, Thomas Part is fit to play. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they line up on, on Sunday. Uh, before we go on to the kind of next talking point, and we will predict the Arsenal game a little bit later on in, in Raggy's predictor, but um need to hear from one of our sponsors, the guys um, at the Terrace. I obviously caught up with them guys last week for their podcast, which um, I do do on a, a regular occasion or I try and be as uh, regular as I, I possibly can. Um you bought out from them recently, lads? Any Christmas presents that you can talk about? Not recently. It's payday, payday tomorrow, mate. So the order will be going in a weekend for presents at some point. What's uh, what's catching your eye? Obviously, don't give too much away for people will um, know what you're sending them. But uh, I'm probably going to get the Bella, mate, the dog. Probably one of the neck things. That's high nice, on top mate. of the list, mate. Got to kick the dog out at Christmas, aren't you? Yeah, kick the dog out, yeah. No, I, don't, out. I don't think Bella watches or nor can understand. So she definitely does. She definitely does. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely does. Um, I like those tree decorations. I'm gonna have to get a couple of them. When I yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna rock the creep. We've we've had a we've had a mutual agreement in our house that the tree's going up on Saturday, uh, this Saturday coming. I know. What? Um, I know. Um, but. The uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hook me up some terrace Christmas decorations for sure. Uh, Bielsa uh, Christmas jumper is definitely on the list as well. But um, to give the lads credit as well, they're knocking up a T-shirt for kids, uh, part of the Terrace Life um, gang, uh, and it's free to those who may be struggling at this time of year to to get presents for the kids. And I think it's a it's a top class um, touch from them guys. And you know. All the way through, they've been top class with stuff like this. The the um, Captain Tom Moore mug, the NHS kit mug, all this type of stuff. Um, and they've been absolutely top class. But uh, apart from being absolutely sterling individuals, they knock out some incredible gear as well. Uh, we've all got a terrace mug. Um, I saw Paddy drinking from his Berardi mug earlier on, which you can see on camera now if you're watching live. Rags has got his own mug, which is a little bit sycophantic. But because it's raggy, we can kind of go with it, I think. Yeah, come on. Um, Let me off. To be honest, mate, I get like a, I get a, comp, uh, I get compelled every time I have a drink from your mug, like generally tea before bed, to send you a picture saying, just having a tea with Raggy before bed. Um, yeah, thinking of it. While watching I'm a Celebrity, um, which will not bring Paddy's 
TV choices up because, to be honest, people will just switch off and there's like 135 people watching at minute and we don't want to lose too many people. Easy. To, to easy watching, man. I'm telling you, it's all about um, easy watching. Yeah, let, let's finish the terrace bit off and then we'll get on to your Lego collection and your TV <laughs> choices because they're not great. But anyway, yeah, the guys at the terrace, listen, Christmas is coming up. They do some incredible stuff on there. Uh, go check them out at theterracestore.com. Uh, there's loads of kit mugs for your mum, your dad, your grandma, your granddad, your auntie, your uncle, your sister, your brother, your mother. And there's even stuff for your dog on there as well. So go check them out. Um, they're doing some T-shirts for those who may not have uh, quite as much money as they want. Um, yeah, go check them out. Uh, info at theterrorstore.com and a massive, uh, sorry, theterrorstore.com and a massive thanks for them to continue to support us. So, Mr. Miller, that's you at the bottom. Let's talk about your TV choices because... I'm a little bit concerned, and to be honest, I was ready for Chalking Fuck on Talking Show on um, Tuesday because it came to light that too many of us watch Bake Off and not enough of us watch I'm a Celebrity. But then there's a knock-on effect from that. We figured out that you watch The Only Way is Essex and some other nonsense thing. So yeah, um, Chelsea, explain Chelsea. yourself. Maybe, you explain know it's yourself. One the, it's one of them where obviously our lass is in charge at TV remote, so she's always. Oh, good. And you, no, and you, no, and you'll be blamed it. on the last. Yeah. And you'll be blamed on your last. I'm, I'm not blaming it. It's one of them where should, I'll be watching. I might be watching an England game that's a little bit boring, and she says, "Can I put Made in Chelsea on?" And you half battle it, and you go, "No, no, leave this on." But you're really thinking, "I won't mind watching that because it's quite good." <laughs> 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 So it's all right, yeah. I don't mind right. it. Easy watching, bit of football manager in front of you while it's on because you don't have to concentrate that much. Mm. Right. But then, but then you all hammered me for watching. I'm a celebrity, or, no. or certainly young Ben and and Raggy certainly had a little bit of a um, a dig at my I'm a celebrity guilty pleasure. I just don't do reality TV. So. Listen, what more do you want than seeing Beverly Callard eat a massive knacker? There's, there, there are websites, Gary. <laughs> Gary? We have got Sunday name, Gary. <laughs> Gary, there are websites for this. Time. There are websites where I can share you things. <laughs> um, like anyway. last, last, last night, they had that eating challenge, and it's unbelievable viewing. For the right, but, but, but let's, let's bring this up. We need to do like, uh, well, we don't, but Pad, like, <laughs> where, where do you sit on the, um, where do you sit on the, um, Knacker eating challenge. Could you eat a knacker or the, the tip yeah. of a knob end? Yeah, I'd have, I'd have no problem. Obviously, the knob end's not attached to the person. It's separate from the animal. <laughs> Let's clear that up. The, the eating challenges, I'd have no problem with. I can't swim very well. So, do you know when people are having to swim and getting water? They're the ones I struggle with. But eating ones, mate, yeah, no worries. Yeah, I'm, should, I'm, I'm with that. Why are you up for a talking show eating challenge, mate? I don't yeah, know yeah. If you're gonna get <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go find some knackers. Let's get eating. Um, what about you, Rags? Are you, are you? Could you eat some bulls balls or something? Probably, yeah. Yeah, depends how hungry you are. I've done, I've done one before where you, you, I think someone ordered them off the internet. We had a night out, and there was like a bag of like insects or whatever. And then you had to eat them stuff like that. Like, right, literally, right. We're, we're 130 episodes into talking show. 130 odd. And uh, we've had a night out, just the one night out, where we went to the FBAs or whatever they were called then, they have, whatever. How have I never known that on one of your nights out, Reggie, you decided to buy loads of balls to eat? They weren't me. Like, they weren't balls. They were like insects, like a bag of insects. Ah, right. They were like, it was sort of like a bush trucker child thing. Right. And in the end, I think I ate more than I, I actually had to. Because I was, they were like eating crisps. <laughs> Give it another one of them dried moth things. <laughs> Grasshopper eating, yeah. After COVID, we are never going around to Raggy's to watch no. the ball. No, <laughs> no. I'm a good cook, honestly. It's not no. always insects. <laughs> I'm not bothered. Um, I think I could eat oat that doesn't like, smell. If it's if it smells like badly pungent as it's getting towards my mouth, then I'm, I'm probably struggling at that point because I'll probably start gipping. Yeah. Uh, anyway... We've um we've we've digest we've uh you know we're, we're doing some good time filling here to be honest. Uh, moving on then. Um, other Wonder other what news. Your dad could eat. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out next time we get him on. Um, in other news, down. Patrick Bamford, uh, PFA Player of the Month. Um, nice, amazing, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Fair play to him. You know the amount of stick this guy's took over his time, not from everybody. And to be fair, I've not heard much of it in the ground, if any. 
you know, fair play to him. You know, his goal ratio, the way he's played, fair play to him. I'm, I'm chuffed for the lad, to be honest. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, obviously, I'm sure the magic was something similar, but. 100%. And this, you know, quite a few people on this podcast have, have, have backed him to the hill, you know, for a long time. Um, and it's it's good to see that he's getting that level of recognition. You know, we had it again in the summer, you know, straight the, the, the minute we get promoted, he's not good enough, you know, all a load of my non-leads uh, supporting mates going, well, you're going to need to sign a striker because Bamford shit and all that kind of nonsense. Um, and I just went, you know, he'll be fine. He, we will start. I, it, I knew we'd go out and sign another player, but I knew the first game of the season, as long as he was fit, he'd be starting. Um, and, uh, yeah, and he's, pretty, he's he's just proven himself. I've, I've always liked him. It was all over the media, though. You had the talk sport questioning whether he were good enough. You had David O'Leary questioned whether he were good enough, didn't he? You had Asselbank questioning whether he's good enough. So. <laughs> I'm not being funny, but Asselbank still thinks he plays for Crystal Palace because he's <laughs> inept as a fucking co- as, as a as a commentator. He's inept. He's he's useless. I don't you know what it is. I just think that he's always negative. Like about yeah. Leeds, he's always negative. No matter how well we do or play, there's always a negative point to it with us. That's what I just don't understand. But for me, with Bamford, I think yeah, it's fully deserved. I think it was a. He went to a vote, didn't it? Um, I think you could vote through Twitter and stuff, couldn't you, for it? So let's be honest, if if a Leeds fan's up for a, a player's up for a vote, it usually wins, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, As we saw with... We vote yesterday, didn't they, for the best ever championship team? It got to final with Reading, didn't it? Yeah. And then Reading were winning, and then I looked at it 11 minutes later, and obviously there were like 100 shares, and it were all Leeds fans, and Leeds won it by about 30%. Yeah, Rob, Robbie Gotts got man at match for Lincoln as well. I don't know if he played well, but I voted for him. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> Leeds fans are very good at swaying a vote, to be fair, so fair enough. Who was it who got the only one of our lone players got goal of the month or goal of the week or something as well? Because our Leeds yeah. fans were voting it. Yeah. Um, to be fair, that's probably how we got nominated for an award last year because just because we're Leeds fans. You know what, goal, that's, but... It's classy for a young player who's trying to make his name somewhere. You've got all the Leeds fans behind you because it, for a footballing CV, how did you learn go? Yeah, I got player of the month, I got this, I got that. He doesn't say who voted, he just says the award. Yeah. Before we move on to Raggy's Predictor, um, <clears throat> this YouTube handle, which I, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, but A13MXR said, have I missed the Talking Shut Run Club chat? Let's get it going. Right. I don't want to talk about the Talking Shut Run Club for too much because, to be honest, Paddy's just setting some ridiculous times. Like I went out the other day and ran 5K, the first bit of training I've done without my weighted vest, and I come back at like 29 minutes, and I was like, Lads, I'm ripping it up. Um, you know, I, I feel like an athlete. And then Paddy sets a 21 minute, 24 seconds, 5k time, and I just get back in my box and decide I'm just going to drink beer and not run anymore. The, uh, the, the first rule of talking shut run club is Paddy's already finished. Paddy's not allowed <laughs> to talk. Do you about know what? Talking. Right, I can honestly say I went from my. I looked on my Nike running app. I went for my first run. I put a little bit of weight on. Got a little bit doughy. After not playing, <laughs> doy, got a little bit doy, and I thought, right, I, I need to go get out running. I got two kilometers in and thought, I've lost it here. My legs have gone, and it took me my first ever run were about thirty-two minutes something. And then I don't even worry about time. I just think, even if I'm knackered, I'll just go out and just do a couple of miles. I just think if you get your the miles in your legs, it, it's all right, isn't it? Get the calories and stuff. You feel good, don't you, when you get out? Yeah. <laughs> Death for me, yeah. Um, so we we have like accidentally created a talking shut running club. Um, if you follow us on social media, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram, all that type of stuff, um, then drop us a message if you're into running, and we'll you know we'll uh, attempt in a weird kind of way to encourage you. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm like I've returned to running after best part of probably 15 years off uh, because to be honest, I fell out of love with it, but. I've suddenly discovered the love back again, so I'm 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 bang back at it at the moment. Um, I'm not sure what the end goal is. I'm just quite enjoying me running at the minute. I'm sure I'm sure when COVID settles down a bit, we could all meet up on like a Saturday morning and go for a run, couldn't we? Like a talking shut run. Yeah, we've done it before, rags, haven't we? We, weren't, um, we have, yeah, New yeah. Mal- um, New Maladam, didn't we? We have, yeah. And uh, recently, before before we had uh, Tia. 
tier and lockdown and stuff like that. Me and young Ben uh, met up as well and did Scamandon steps, which were an absolute brutal uh, start to a Saturday morning. I can tell you that. Yeah, it's but, pretty, um, yeah, pretty great. No, it's, um, it's all good. I mean, this year I've I've run this year more than I've I've ever run uh, in my life. <laughs> Talking about fitness and running, and Gaz takes a swig of Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and replenish, you know, Anna, replenishing the fluids. I couldn't, I couldn't recommend it enough, to be honest. Especially when you know a lot of people are working from home, and and a lot of people are kind of isolated, and uh, it's just the best way to kind of get your head straight. For me, after a day of staring at a computer and sitting in your kitchen all day, it's uh, yeah, end of the day and getting out and just clearing your head and getting a few miles in the legs. Clip. Raggy's saying clearing his head. I've seen the pace he's running around cross gates. I've caught him a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it pace, mate. <laughs> anyway, a little, so a little plod around cross, cross gates. If you're into your running and um, you know you want some help, then I don't know, drop us a DM or something. And when COVID does this, be like Paddy says, it'd be nice to just meet up and have a bit of a run around, nice and steady pace, chat, chat about leads, all that type of stuff. So yeah, um, give us a message and we'll we'll, we'll sort it. Um, before we move on to Raggy's predictor, though, just a, a bit of a point that we came up with last night. And um, credit, it wasn't my idea. Uh, it was it was somebody else's, um, James Howson, suggested that we gave up um, the sponsorship slot for Raggy's predictor to local businesses who were struggling in the time of COVID to pay for sponsorship. Now, sponsorship's not cheap, um, to be honest. So, you know, and, and what we've said all along for all of us that have involved at Talking Show and, that, and obviously now Pad, that... You know, we wanted to use the audience for good. And we've done many things before. We've done charity events and we've raised money for various things and blah de blah. Because, you know, us at Talking Shop feel that it's our duty, you know, the right thing to do um, to give a bit back. So we decided to give up to uh, Raggy's predictor uh, sponsorship for four week periods to local businesses struggling. And to be honest, we was absolutely inundated with um, requests and we will get through them and we'll find ways of working around it. Um, obviously, that's not saying that we're some big time commercial entity that are going to get you thousands and thousands and thousands. But, you know, we do get a fair few people watching and we're, we're eternally grateful uh, to those who watch, listen and download the podcast. Uh, but this week's um, Regis Predictor and for the next four weeks is uh, Robert Harrison, graphic design and photography. It provides efficient and comprehensive freelance graphic design and photography services for business and personal use, offering a wide range of services from brand identity, signage, and photography. So, yeah, go check him out. Um, he's got a website, Robert Harrison Graphic Design. Uh, I had a little look on his website, some impressive stuff on there from his portfolio, from photography to graphic design. So, yeah, so he'll, he'll be there for um, the next three, three weeks. And then we'll try and continue to support local businesses until COVID disappears and local businesses can catch up. And one for you, um, Pad, because I think, are you a bit of a sweet head? Am I right in saying you've got a bit of a sweet tooth? Or am I wrong? Is it someone else? No, yeah. I'd, yeah. There's someone else who runs a sweet stall. So we're going to get, definitely going to get that one because we love a sweet. But yeah, um, Robert Harrison, Harrison, graphic design, local, local guy, um, watches the podcast. Uh, listens to the podcast, downloads it. So, yeah, go over, check him out if you want any photography doing, any uh, graphic design and, and freelance stuff. And, yeah, um, that's what we're going to do for the next you know what, uh, period. You know what you've just done then, Gaz? Really good active listening. I told you I got a little bit doughy. And then all of a sudden then I love sweets. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like what yeah. you've done there, mate. Yeah, you like that, mate. Yeah. You, listen, yeah. you, you said doughy. I just filled in the blanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bit of a bit of a bonbon, man. I get it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I like a bonbon myself. Uh, all, all the problem is I'm, I'm lacking a few teeth, so chewy stuff's a bit of an issue. But anyway, moment yeah, to Raggy for your predictor. No, the sweets, mate. Sherbet pips, mate. They, as a kid, they were banging when they used to weigh the sherbet pips out, the tiny little ones. You, you And you got like a million of them in a bag and you felt like you were getting good value for money, mate. Sherbet pips are the one. Rags, what's your um, sweet um Talk about as a kid. Talk about as a kid, if we were going into like a sweet shop and getting like, you know, a quarter or whatever... I always went for licorice torpedoes. Ah, Judd's a big fan of licorice torpedoes. Mine were always um, a bag of K-Lai. That's that's because Raggy thought they were Beatles. You could imagine <laughs> that they were Beatles because he likes his <laughs> mine, mine was always um, licorice, to uh, sorry, licorice torpedoes. Sorry, licorice torpedoes. Mine was always K-Lai and a donkey lolly. 
That's good, yeah. Just yeah, a man. big bag of sugar, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Can you remember as kids when you used to, like, obviously we're all of a similar age. Um, I think I might be just about the oldest. But anyway, can you remember when you used to go to the sweet shop and it was like literally every wall were covered in them boxes where like, um, you know, like that's, that, like there's one shop near us now that still do it. Um, but it's died away, hasn't it? And they were like really nostalgic days where you used to go in and say, can I have a quarter of cola bottles or a quarter of, you know, licorice torpedoes or whatever. I had my work well, experience in a post office in Oakwood that used to do them. I don't know if they still do. Opposite Oakwood mm-hmm. Clock. And there used to be that. So my work experience just weighing out sweets and stuff, yeah. Nice. Weird. There were there were one at my cousin's house we used to love going to and always getting some sweets because he also he also had like a rack of like videos that he could rent. And he didn't give a he didn't care what age you were, so you'd be able to, to like get where you <laughs> This this eighteen can you watch Arnold Schwarzenegger and Commando. Yeah, whatever, mate. You're eight, eight years old. Like, Raggy ball it on with a quarter of licorice torpedoes and it on VHS. <laughs> Scarred forever. Watching some video nasty. Yeah. Mate, legit, legit. Um, it you scarred me as a kid. Between Sugar Rush and Scared for His Life, you can't sleep. Mate, literally, um, it it scared it scarred me as a kid. Oh, I, I've mate, legit, mate. I've legit got PTSD from that bit where bed linen on um, on on washing line shakes and he stood behind it. Mate, honestly, I don't like clowns off the back of it now. Mate, I'm the, I'm the exact same same film. Anyway, shall we uh, shall we predict some prediction stuff for you? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. No, oh, hold on, hold on, wait, rags, hold on, hold on, Phil. So, uh, licorice torpedoes. Raggy's predictor. Boom. Mate, everything's been a giant fuck up tonight. I may as well. It's all right, mate. Let's let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. We had um, we had three games to predict last week, but one of them hadn't been played yet because that plays tonight. Um, first round was obviously the Ireland game, um, which no one got bang on. But everyone apart from Paddy went for an England win, so we all picked up a point. Paddy obviously had his allegiance, allegiance to Ireland as well. Couldn't couldn't separate the two, so he went two two. Is never ever going to get a draw. <laughs> um, you know what? Straight after the podcast, my dad phoned me, and I went, "Oh, what's England now?" And Sky went, "England one nil." Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, the thing is, Pad, you you thought England weren't going to beat Ireland, but then you went for an England win in Belgium. Do you know what? Do you know what surprised me? I messaged you in the group chat, and I said, "Oh, what did I go England Belgium?" And you went England win, and I, I was like, "England win? Why would I go in England win against Belgium?" And I well, thought, the thing was, you went for a two 0 England win because Gaz had gone for a two 0 Belgium win, which obviously it was, so he picks up three points. Um, I also said uh, Belgium would win, but not two 0 So it leaves us with tonight still to play. Um, Gary on ten. Young Ben seven, me six, Patty three. That is all going so it's wrong. Me. You it's know what's you know so good though? On a, on a positive, fantasy football starts this weekend, which separates <sighs> the men from the boys. Mate, you, you are know. literally hanging on to that, man. I literally hanging on to that. I have got a problem though. Five players are injured on it this week. Oh, so shit. I, was, I, want, I, I actually wanted to try and get the talking shut manager of the month, but that could go out the window with all these injuries. You're gonna to have to use a wild card. I can't, mate. I've used them. Oh shit! It's gone <laughs> big. It's gone big early. It's gone big early. Whatever it was. I've got it. I've just got to bring a point over, Rags, before going to it. A fair few people in the comments saying, "Look like I'm drinking a bottle of red wine." I may say I'm drinking a bottle of Budweiser, but uh, the camera angle of where I'm sat in my bedroom makes it look like it's like a four-liter bottle of red wine. I don't and have that much hand, of a drinking problem. And itchy little hands as well, mate. Yeah, little. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my strong hand. Yeah. <laughs> Use my strong hand, child. Anyway, move on. <laughs> yeah, we're not drinking bottles of wine, mate. So we, we're not, it's not promotion party. Like, yeah, so we haven't got promoted like we did last time. Anyway. Exactly. Um, yeah, so they're the scores. Obviously, England played tonight. Everyone's gone for an England win. Um, so we'll see how we get on with that. Uh, moves on to Sunday. Um, Leeds Arsenal at Ellen Road. Young Ben submitted his. Score already by proxy. He reckons Leeds we're going to win 2 1. Um, let's start with you, Gary, seeing as you're winning. Oh, shit. Um, do you know what? 
I'm going to go for a 2 0 Leeds victory. 2 0. <sighs> Pat? 3 1 Leeds win. I've changed my mind. I want to go 3 1 Leeds. Um, <laughs> 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 I'm going one apiece. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we win. I've got to. St I've got to stick this on here. Steve Millard, who unfortunately uh, didn't w ring the, um, didn't win the. Hold on, I've lost him here now. Didn't win the FIFA tournament when we rang him up. But um, he's an extended member of my family, and he's an Arsenal fan. And at the bottom of the screen, you will see uh, a total of about fifteen laughy eye emojis, cry eye emojis, uh, on the basis of our. Um, score prediction so we'll, we'll just have to we'll just have I wonder to if Arsenal get beat whether he'll tune in next week uh, to be fair to Steve um, again uh, obviously I have got um, loyalties because he's an extended member of the family but he has literally listened from the very start of the podcast and he's an Arsenal fan uh, so yeah we must be doing something right. Uh, he's also given his prediction, Rags. If you want to, Raggy, just scribble this down. Steve Millard says it's going to be Arsenal 5, Leeds 1. I tell you what, I'll put him in the guest pat. Yeah, pat. in fact, put him in the guest. Also, just, not every week we have a guest, but the guest has actually got as many points as Paddy <laughs> this season. <laughs> yeah, but Brown, you, Brownie said 3-0 England yeah, you've Island. Got, you've, got ex, you've got ex-pros, mate, in there. There's some big names in those guests, mate, so they should know the stuff. So I'm happy drawing with them. That's all right. Yeah, yeah it's a fair point, yeah. So, so yeah, Steve, tune in next week and we'll we'll see how that kind of works out. Paul Wright says, uh, trouble is this time uh, that his missus is a gooner. I like... I'll be honest, I kind of liked watching the Gooners of the uh, Invincible time, but just purely because Thierry Henry was a, just a freak of a player. The best the best player I've ever seen at Ellen Road, by far. By far. There was one game he came to Ellen Road and just right royally took the piss. Didn't he get a standard ovation off once? Didn't people clap him off when he got Mate, I think I, st I think I stood up and clapped him that day. He popped up yeah. everywhere and just took everyone's soul that particular day. 4-0. Four yeah, nil, yeah. He was it was unreal. Like it was one of them days where you just sit there and just go, Do you know what? Like that's that's incredible. That's one of them games where now I want to take my son and go, Do you know what? Like, just watch that. That's that's football, that's incredible. I hope I hope Eddie don't play against us because you know he'll end up scoring more. Yeah. I don't think he plays. I don't think he plays, but we'll see. We'll see. Talking about talking about Leeds Arsenal at um Ellen Road. Were you there at the, when we drew him in the FA Cup? Yeah, Bradley Johnson's Thunder Bastard. Yeah. I was there. I was sat in the gods of the East Stand because it's the only place I could get a ticket. Same. We, I was up there as well. Were you, Pad? Yeah, yeah I was up there. We, uh, I went with my dad and we'd um, borrowed someone's season tickets. And by the time my dad had come through from Connie and then we drove to Elmrow, we got stuck in the traffic. It, it kicked off before we'd even... Before we'd even parked up, by the time we got, we were one nil down. By the time we got to the, um, got to turnstiles, then the season cards won't bloody work. So we had to go to the ticket office. By the time we then got actually charged up to get in, we were two nil down. We just got to our seats just as uh, as Bradley Johnson wound up for that shot. And do you know, uh, do, do you know when you went to the ticket office with somebody else's ticket, what were they doing as a job? To in the well, we <laughs> it. Yeah, years ago, it's fine, fine. It didn't matter then. It didn't matter. We were, we were terrible. Um, um, I'll tell you something though. That game, Cesc Fabregas was magnificent. Yeah, I remember Nasri being good as well. I it was it was weird because obviously that season, obviously they'd opened up the East Stand Upper, and obviously it was a sellout, weren't it? And it was one of them. It was like we were in League One, and you just looked around and you thought. God, what would what would it be like if it were like this every week again? It'd be empty because we COVID, we, wouldn't it? You know and then obviously we got we got it back, didn't we? And then fucking COVID. <laughs> Do you know what is scary though? That game where Johnson scored is twenty Jan twenty eleven. Really? Yeah. Jesus. In Jan twenty eleven. Mate, do you know something? They were they were good times. I enjoyed that time. Mate, we had a good team then. Yeah, we did, mate. If you look at that team, Bradley Johnson, Robert Snodgrass, Johnny Owson, Luciano Gradle. Becchio, Gradle, Gradle, Beckford, 
Kiznarbo. Kiznarbo. You know, like we we had a legit good side then. Like that team would have would have challenged if they would have got there. I think. It I don't if that team had stayed together, it goes up again, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. At the championship, well, but they're all quite young and starting off, aren't they? Like, I've got, I've got a, I've got a bit of a trivia question for you, lads. Um, the the Dan Dob, nineteen eighty two. Name three players who played for Leeds and Arsenal. John Lukic, David O'Leary, David O'Leary, Rowcastle, David, David Rowcastle. Yeah. Easy, easy. Don't come at us. Don't take a shot at the champion. Unless you know what you're on about. Paddy's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Dude. Sanchez what? Sanchez what? Eddie and Ketty. Eddie and Ketty, yeah. Luke so, Ehrling. Yeah. Did he get a first team game for it, Arsenal? He won't mention Champions League, won't he? Um, Kyle Bartley. Yeah. Uh, David Seaman don't quite count, although he leads fun. Um, oh, midfielder who just names just completely eluded me. I'll cheat here. I'll have a look. Have a look. Let's have a look here. So, players who both played for Arsenal and Leeds. I bet there's some David Rowcastle. Someone's put da, 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 da. Paul Dickoff. Paul Dickoff, yeah. Good shout, yeah. Good shout. Bradley Johnson. Bradley Johnson, Bradley Johnson played for Arsenal. Yes, yeah, what it says. Bradley Johnson was on the books at Arsenal's time. One time at Arsenal. Bloody hell. Because we got him from Northampton, didn't we? Mm. Yeah. There's oh. not many more that's coming up on there. It's more of an Arsenal group chat, that. Right, I've got a question for you before, um, before we carry on. Um... One team in the football league whose letters of that team are not in the word mackerel. <laughs> what? So the word mackerel, you cannot mm -hmm. spell this team's name from any of their letters. Anyway, Raggy, let's get to your predictor while you lot think about that. We're finished. We're done. That could be a oh, long, long time, one. that. Could be a long one. Anyway, <laughs> let us know. Send us a message, DM us, whatever. We'll let you know. Um, yeah, lads. By the, oh, no, I just took the roof off the south. Mate, side. we were just coming to Grand Designs. Paddy's Grand Designs. Just took the roof off. <laughs> so, Pad, uh, we discussed last week about at what episode your Ellen Road would be done. Yeah. Jermaine Pennant. Another name there, Arsenal. Yeah. Steve Millard just chips that one in there, Jermaine Pennant. Um, so, where are we at, Pad? Where, where, where are we yeah, at in on. the we're, Grand we're Designs well, build? Then. We're doing well. It's, I've got the roof on the south and the west end now. Nice. It's looking good if you're watching live or on YouTube, which, so, is, which is good. Do you know what, right? I'm getting a lot of stick off a few of my mates and people on Twitter of how long this is taking. Which I think we might have helped that last week, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, but the amount of messages I've had from people that are either wanting it as a gift for themselves or buying it as a gift, right? But some of the pieces don't do it justice of how small they actually are. We're talking like some of them are like half the size of your little fingernail. So I had someone message me saying, I'm thinking about getting this for my son. The son's four, and I'm thinking... No, no, no. <laughs> if you want your yeah. son to choke to death, get that. Yeah, it's not it's not standard Lego, is it? It's it's like miniature Lego. They're very yeah, very. It's like a model. Pieces. It's like a model. But yeah, you know what? I actually thought a bit. Nobody thought I'd do it. They thought I'd throw it out the window. This is annoying me now, though, because I'm breaking the roof out here. So, but, Mate, I, I'd love to see you drop it right now. Did you, well, did you see what did you see what Tom Clay tweeted last night? The first no, argument what? he put. I'm gonna laugh my head off when you have a la uh, an argument with your lass and she breaks it. And I thought, Mate. wow. Like, if Emma then, so um, lovely partner of Pad, broke your Ellen Road Lego after, how much of a Paddy would you throw? Oh, mate. Paddy. Wed wedding could be off, mate. Really? <laughs> sure. Mate, it's a big commitment, this, to my Ellen Road. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Definitely. When he said that last night, I'm actually probably going to get some sort of plastic thing to cover it, because knowing my mates, they'll come round after COVID, obviously, and they'll do something to it, whether they take a roof off or... They break the east and they're doing something to it. 
Yeah, defo. Anyway, moving on from your Lego, the uh, Dandob 1982 is back and he's got the right answer. Swindon Town is not in mackerel. Fair play. Impressed with that, are you? Impressed. Yeah, yeah, good. Impressed. Uh, I was basing it around the, the word city, you see. I thought it would end in city. Yeah, <laughs> what did you do with it? Oh, I've written it down everything. While you were fannying around with your model, <laughs> we <were trying> to... <laughs> while you were playing with your Lego, like some. You know, well, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say because it'd be offensive, so I'll leave that. Um, moving on then, before we uh, get into our favourite... Um, Can I just mention, my, dad, my dad's put in the note, in the comment section, Loot and Town. Since when has Loot and Town Mac not been in mackerel? Sorry, uh, Mr. Rag, and happy birthday, but um, mackerel. Lull, 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 lull. Lull. What was the? Come yeah, on. I actually think I misheard the question here. What was the question? So the question was, which football team? Yeah. Can you not spell mackerel from their name? I thought you said Macron. <laughs> I thought. See, it's all stadiums for you, Pad, isn't it? You're just purely <laughs> stadium. Macron <laughs> Stadium, Emirates Stadium, Lego Stadium. You just, it's just all that. Anyway. Yeah. Before we move on to our favourite segment of the week, which is shit out of the week, and it, it's a good one this week, to be honest. Uh, we better hear from one of our other sponsors. We've already discussed earlier on about businesses struggling uh, during the times of COVID, and one of the biggest uh, adverts that you can possibly use is obviously the internet. And the guys at the social mayors, Joe and Co, can maximise your business potential by using the internet to do just that. Um, it's actually quite mental, really, how much of a far reach the internet has got. Um, what is the most retweets you've ever had, Raggy? I don't know how many retweets it was. I did I did one post last season that got about 1,300 likes. Good effort. Good effort. Pad, can you top that? Uh, no, I, put, I think my pinned one, that's a lot. I've got it on here. I put some on right end of the season. Uh, when did I put it on? I think it was like when we could have gone up 1500 likes but it was a, a quote from phil here so you're always going to get likes for quoting sir phil are you? yeah you've uh you've nicked some off sir phil there but yeah. anyway the point i'm trying to make is with uh engaging content and the right uh skill set you can really get your business out there to many many people just talking about pad and rags there you know the best part of nearly three thousand retweets so three thousand people have seen that and that's just the people who engage with it so uh check out the guys at the social mares if you haven't got the time expertise or knowledge to be able to advertise your business using the internet then go check them guys out the social mares uh, .co .uk or, or email them info at the social mares and they'll be able to assist you uh in the best way possible Moving on then to shit house of the week, and um, it was a barren one right until Paddy dropped this um, comedy gem in there. It was only because um, I saw it on Sky Sports News. It was a good one. It was a good one. Um, <laughs> so nominations this week are the international break because it keeps breaking people or they keep getting COVID, but also Joel Tompkins. Now there's a little bit of a crossover sport here from football to rugby, but Joel Tompkins has to be nominated for shit house of the week because. He fingered Richie Myler's bumhole during a rugby game. I, I, was, I, was, I was watching it and it was blatant as well. He's, he's, tried to, he's come out and tried to defend himself saying it was completely accidental. He's, he's essentially, unbelievable. He's essentially used Mr. Ellen Skelton as a finger puppet live on Sky <laughs> uh, and got an eight-match ban for it. So we have to not, it would be very remiss of us as a podcast with the name Shit House of the Week to not nominate Joel Tompkins <laughs> for fingering a man's bottom live on Sky Sports in some sort of weird way of getting a sporting advantage. Um, Paddy, have you ever grabbed a man's knackers to get a sporting advantage or anything like that, like Gaza did to Vinny or vice uh, versa? No, I think. When you kind of know someone from other team, there's people when you go up for a corner will just try and give it, give you a little whack now and again, just joking around. But no, nothing, <laughs> nothing like that that he's got a ban for. No. Uh, Raggy, at a lower league like me and you played at, have you ever um, tried to get a sporting advantage over someone? Nah, <laughs> I couldn't get close. <laughs> nah, no, I can't. I can't. 
To be honest, mine was more functioning with a trying to function as a goalkeeper with a raging hangover was my biggest challenge every week. So, um, yeah, wasn't really bothered about the opposition. I've done the accidental stand on toes thing a few times. Yeah, by by accident, oh, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah, nip, nipping behind the arms as well. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we've only got two nominations this week: uh, the international break or Joel Tompkins for making a finger puppy out of Ellen Skelton's husband live on Sky Sports. Uh, who are we gonna who are we gonna vote, lads? I know there's not much leads in there, but hey ho. Well, my vote, my vote's for Joel Tompkins, the, the rectum of Wigan. <laughs> yeah, uh, Pad, have you got a nomination? Uh, no, I think it's going to have to be that. Do you know what, though? I did have a bit of a weird thing last night, not even sport-related. So the group neighbourhood group chat, I'm not in it because people just waffle on all day, right? I think I put it in the talking shut group, and I thought, this is so weird. So there's me and my like, mate Dom, who obviously a big Leeds fan. Got, got Dom Fletcher, top lad. Yeah, yeah. So we live on the same estate, but he's in this group chat. So, Emma, so our last says, Emma, somebody's been going round... Who do you know anyone on the estate that's got a yellow car? So I was like, no, I they've been going round and taking a photograph of somebody's cat, which I think is a little bit odd anyway, if it's outside, but through the house windows. And then somebody's commented back who I don't even know, saying, Oh, sorry, that's my mate. They really like cats. So <laughs> I messaged Dom straight away and I was like, Have you seen this? this this cat person in the group, and he was like, "Yeah, mate, I was going to comment, then, but I didn't know what to put." But what can you put? <laughs> yeah, imagine if you've got a pet and you look out your window and someone's just taking a photo of your cat through a window. It's a bit odd, that, isn't it? That one just me, but <laughs> that is a bit. That is a bit bizarre, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd give them my nomination if it weren't for poo gate, whatever. <laughs> Finger gate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd one. Rags, have you got any um, last-minute nominations to stick in there? Your house alarm for going off at oh, yeah, hours. Oh, yeah, alarm for going off in the middle of the night, waking me up. Yeah, that was a shit house. Yeah. Still don't know why. Probably going to do it again tonight. Yeah. That's so shall we, shall we give it to um, Joel Knuckle Deep Tonkins in, uh, in Richie Myler's Butty? Um, it's a bit That's odd, it. isn't it? <laughs> It's a bit. The thing is, like, what I, what I can't get when I read, I didn't see the game, but I read the article. I was like, at what at what point do you think there's a bum hole there? I'm going to stick my finger in that right now. Do you know what I do think is quite funny though? He says that he spoke to him after the game. That's a bit of an awkward conversation. That what do you, how do you approach that? It'd be along the lines of when it. Um, <clears throat> hey, pad. You could, have, um, you could have at least buy me a drink first. <laughs> Hey, up, Pad. Um, good, good game today. Um, I'm, I'm quite sorry that I stuck my finger up your ass um, <laughs> during that scrum. Um, to be honest, uh, it was just there, and I saw it, and I thought, sod it, it's going in. Um, yeah. Um, a bit have, you weird, the, have you watched the video of it? The right no. stands up and has a bit of an argument, and but nobody can figure out what's going on. Like, why? Why are you so annoyed? And then What's Richie slowly... Myler's reaction to it? That like he's not happy, mate. He's not mate, happy. we need we need to reach out to Richie Myler. We need some form of like, you know, closure on this event. Like, when did he realise it was being penetrated by Joel Tomkins' finger? And and did it make him give the ball up? Did he not want to play rugby anymore? Or I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird one. Anyway. So uh, we're going to give Joel Tompkins shit finger of the week. Uh, congratulations, to Joel Tompkins, uh, the first ever uh, sport crossover shit house of the week. Um, crazy, crazy. Well, lads, um, brings us to the end of episode 121. From getting, you know, a cult hero of Leeds United who played for such names as Jack Charlton, Billy Bremner, Eddie Gray, was under the wing of Joe Jordan. Um, was called the complete number nine by Peter Shilton to us three talking about somebody getting the bum all fingered by a rugby player because we've had to fill time. Um, it's been it's been emotional, lads. Thanks. It's been that. good. Yeah, um, I've got to say a, a massive uh, props and and thanks to the 147 people who managed to stay on this live stream while we've just waffled utter bollocks for about an hour and 19 minutes. Um, 
you know, big props to you. Thanks very much. But no, uh, complete joking apart, we will get Birdie back on when we sort his technical issues out down at his end. And uh, we will be back next week where I'm handing over the presenter mantle to the man with the best beard on the podcast, Raggy. So Raggy is the man in charge next week. Rags, all I'd say is, don't do me out of a job. Not that this pays me of a job, but um, <laughs> thanks. I don't think there's any danger of that. Yeah, please. All, all um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have said it because everyone's not going to tune in next week. Please yeah. don't be really good. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'll be in down. In fairness, all he needs to do is make sure that he can get a guest on. Yeah. And he's won. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be winning. If you, if, Raggy, if you can get a guest on next week, you, you're doing better than I am this week. But no, um, joking apart, I'm not here next week. I am away in the uh, parish of Wales uh, doing some training. So Raggy will be taking the um, the mantle uh, and will be joined by Pad and Young Ben next week, same time, same place. Big thanks to everybody who has joined in. If you were listening back to this on a download, really do apologise for the lack of being bad. We will have him on soon, but you know we can't help the internet or technology. And yeah, like, subscribe, leave us some um, feedback. Uh, Preferably nice feedback. And uh, don't stick your finger up someone's bum to try and get a spot in advantage. I'll sit there. See you.